Mind your fingers. <laughs> okay, here we are again with another video. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton, I'm a jeweler from the UK. I have over 20 years experience making handmade pieces and uh, then I moved to Japan. So now I'm making uh, jewelry, making instructional videos for YouTube. So welcome, I hope you like the video and find, find it useful. So regular viewers to the channel will know that now full instructional guides are only available to patrons of the channel. There's a link in the description if you wanna find out about that. But this one's a bit different. There's like a part one and a part two. Part one is gonna be making this ring to completion, yeah? But then part two, which will be only for the patrons, I'll show you what you can do with it to really take it to a new level and then adjusting the design slightly. The design is really versatile. And if you could make it, make it to completion like really nicely, really neatly, there's no reason why you can't put really expensive stones in it and turn it into like a 10 grand, 15 grand version. So you'll be able to look yourself in the, in the mirror and see someone, a jeweler who's creating, who has the ability to create really expensive high-end jewelry. Um, the design is inspired from a very well-known prestigious London jewelers. Uh, I think they're the first ones that kind of did this sort of design. Um, all of jeweler, all of jewelers around the world have sort of copied it into their own version. So today I'm going to do you, I'm going to show you my version, how I do it. And I have actually held in my hand a real version from that jewelers because the place I used to work was a quite a high end store. So we used to get like Van Cleef and Arpool, Tiffany's, Boodles, uh, Cartier pieces in for like sizings or adjustments or putting new claws on or whatever. So I've worked on those actual pieces and uh, I always study them closely to see how they're made and see, see what was up against. And, um, yeah, sometimes you, you see, you spot things that you don't like about it. Like, I, if I was making that, I'd do it better this way or that way. So, uh, yeah, so I was interested to see these really expensive pieces. Um, they're not always as brilliantly made as you might think. There's a, there's a whiff of, not always, this is not, not a general sweeping statement about all of that, but sometimes some of the rings, they would have cost the customer like 15, 20 grand. Like, I don't know, it's just, think of a number and double it sometimes, some of these companies. But the mounts, sometimes there's a whiff of just like, they made it and then got it cast just as like one piece and then put really expensive stones in it. So it's a valuable piece of jewelry, but if I was making it, I would have made it in sections, had it all polished perfectly and then put it together. So it would have been a really beautifully handmade piece. Uh, yeah, I have seen one in mind that it was just a one piece casting with just expensive stones in. So I was a bit disappointed by that because I'm sure the customers charge mega money for, for that particular ring. Anyway, let me show you how to do part one of this full instructional guide, which will enable you to complete a ring. But for the magic trick, you've got to become a patron and see part two to see, see how to really get it to the next, next level of um, amazingness. It's nice because there's no like strict rules on dimensions or measurements or sizes of stones and stuff. Very, very versatile and quite easy to make. So I'm excited to show you this one. Uh, first of all, I've got myself some, I pulled down some square wire and I deed it off a little bit. I put it in the little D-shaped holes in my rolling mills just to give it a, a rounded top. Uh, I would say if you're sticking around through Patreon for part two, you may as well have enough metal for two rings. We're basically, now, step one, we're making a wedding ring. There's a, already a video for that on my on the Diamond Mat channel. I will put a link to it on the screen. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go through it again now, how I make one. So check this out, this is how professionals work here. Yeah? I've got this uh, piece of metal. I wanna cut that in half exactly, yeah? So what we do is we take a pair of side cutters and we just look at it and then go. <laughs> is that exactly half? Look at that. When you've got a bit of experience here yeah, as a, a jeweler, you can, work what may look like very sloppily but actually be doing things very accurately like these are my bits of metal yeah you saw how much effort i put into judging what was halfway like i didn't even spend a second doing it what's that a millimeter a millimeter difference between those two bits of metal pro jeweler next step is to anneal it if you're making a ring for a customer you need to be making it for a specific ring size so I would just start off a bit of a curve on one end just like that get it to the size you want what size do I want L something like silver this kind of gauge you can just push it around 
In fact, go, go down a little bit. Get a tighter curve on there. Try and keep it straight. Maybe straighten that quite well before you do this. Saves it going all twisted. Right, so just tweak that end with my pliers. Sitting at L. When you're working with metal, yeah, like gold and stuff, it's expensive, so you need to consider wastage. So you can't just, if you've got a bit of wire that long, you can't just chop off what you think you might need or wrap it around. Um, or you can't just wrap it around from the middle so you've got a long bit sticking out both ends. You've got to work from one end and just cut it off where you need to get that size. Otherwise, you're being wasteful. You want to leave as long a bit as possible for the next person or for you in the future. Give me something to scratch a line. It says, yeah, and I'm going to cut that end off and then cut it about there. That's about size L. There you go. Cut your bits off at your lines. Mind your fingers. <laughs> Cut those off. I like using two pairs of pliers. Totally do not need to, but uh, I like it because it's not twisting anything. It's kind of, you can hold it really straight. Just line them up. Best pass. So uh, I've lined it up and I'm going to chop through that join a couple of times with my saw blade and then that will get the ends matching really perfect so they sit really close and really tight together. And when you have a good join, solder it up. So uh, from cutting a bit out to get that uh, join nice and tight, the size came down a little bit anyway so it's actually really close to L. Not quite round so I'm just going to give it a little tap with this hammer, not rawhide mallets. You can not see much of that on this channel. If you want to use a rawhide mallet, you can, but don't expect to keep up with me when I'm making stuff because I'll work much faster than you. If you're a patron or you're going to be a patron to see part two, you may as well make two of these. You can't even make three with this design, but I would say don't make three. Two is actually better, but you can do three, but do just do two. <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway, I'm moving on with this one, show you how to complete this. Part one is basically like a single stone, yeah, but we're doing it with beginners in mind. So uh, yeah, if you're just going to watch this video, that's all you need at this stage. I mean, you may as well properly clean it up to like papered finish stage. So I'm just going to go over it lightly with a file, make sure everything's all nice and flat. Run it around the inside. I've got a bit of a blob on the inside of my solder this time. It's nice if you can get the solder the flood on the inside but not actually build up a lump because then all it takes is uh, putting it on your ring stick giving it one tap or maybe two taps and it's completely flat and then you can go straight to your paper whizzers to work around the inside that's a, a nice if you can do that it's a fast way to work and uh, it means you're not wasting solder and stuff but unfortunately today it, quite a high lump so I'm gonna take that off Just lightly touch it. And silver, especially this kind of gauge, that a rough paper whizzer will um, do most of the work for you. Touching up my join. When you're filing over a join, yeah, try to only file the join. If you're filing down the metal either side of it, you're just kind of making the ring thinner in that patch, and that's not good. You can't have a ring with a thin spot there. That's very, very amateurish looking. That's just buzzing it out. After you've papered it, the size, even if it's taken a small amount of metal away, uh, the size will go bigger again. So you need to be double checking your size as you're working on things. And something like a wedding ring, totally not the end of the world if the size has gone a bit too big, because you can always just put it in your ring compressor cone and just pop, pop it down a little bit. That's quite nice, because that definitely makes it really perfectly round. It might put a tiny little flat edge on the corner, but just paper over around the outside again. For such a small size adjustment down, it's quite harmless. I've got a rounded top, yeah, so I'm doing that. Uh, if it's flat, you need to be very careful keeping it flat. This is something I don't think I've shown on the channel before. Just holding a piece of paper and using it against your thumb to go around it. It works really well because you know the whizzers, yeah, that's that's hard. 
So you're putting kind of flat sections on it uh, to go around a, to get it really nice. I use that anyway, just to get all file marks out. But then to go around that, because it's pushing against your soft thumb, it's a nice little abrasive kind of cushion to get, make a rounded section surface really nice and round again. So I'm just working around it. Nice little finishing technique, ready for a polish, but we're not gonna polish it yet, just get it to this stage. Next step, we've got to make two little rub over collets for this. Just a straight sided little barrel, not barrel, a little bit of section of tube, just think of that. Just a tiny little, little rub over edge. So uh, quite easy to do, quite simple. I've got this bit of metal, I'm gonna squash this down so I can get the, get the wire, get the sheet, what's it called, strip, <laughs> out, of the, out of this. And then I will turn it up into two little rub over collets for these stones. So I've got my big stone, you've got big stone and small stone. I just milled out some metal that's enough for the big stone. I actually went way too wide. Uh, I'm not concentrating very well today. Uh, just under a mill, which I quite like, but the depth is way too big. Um, just talk about that a little bit. Like say there's your, this is a rub over setting, yeah? So say there's your diamond uh, or whatever stone. It only, rub over settings only sort of go into there to there, but where this is setting into a ring, a ring underneath it, let's say you're looking at the side of that, that's going to file up, so you lose a little bit off the bottom. So you need that distance, you don't want the stone sticking out the bottom, so it's nice if it's just up a little bit, and then a little bit of metal there for setting. That's sort of how I would like my stone sat inside a, a rub over collet. So I'll make one for my big stone first, but up there, to start off with, I will just start a curve around the edge, maybe a little bit tighter, so it's a bit similar to what the stone is. And I've just got to wrap that around so that stone doesn't go through the hole in the middle, but just sort of sits on the edge. You can always tell you what I do sometimes. Got a bit of blue tack, any kind of like plasticine sort of stuff. You can't buy this in Japan, you know, you can't buy blue tack. They don't know about it. It's a shame because I need it and I'm running out. And when my kids find it, they always take it and then I never see it again. So I'm, I'm running low. So yeah, it's nice if you've got a bit of blue tack, stick it on your stone and then you can, uh, you can hold things above it nicely and see what's going on. So sort of check your curvature. So to do, I get to this stage and I cut off the rubbishy flat bit on the end. And that gives me more space to wrap around that other end of the metal and match up the curve a bit nicer. Check my stone again. It's a little bit tight, but it's working. Okay, if I cut that off, just there. With, with experience, you, you sort of understand what's going on more. Like, it's not perfectly round, it's like that, but you've got the experience to know that once that's turned up and you've lost a bit of metal cutting through the joint to make the joint tight, it will be the right size. But just, it's not difficult, but it takes a bit of experience. You're just actually trying it a few times and then you'll learn what's what. <laughs> So to get this nice and round, I've got this tool, yeah, it's like a mini ring stick. Obviously no sizes on it, it's tiny, but it's quite useful for collets. Uh, I would go around it, tapping it with that. So um, if you don't have that, I'm not at all surprised. It's a bit of a weird tool. You can round things off with your collet punch. You can even get, if you've got any like uh, ball punches, ball bangers, get one that just fits. You can use that as a guide to go around it, tapping it. Uh, what have you got? Well, obviously, when you're happy with the size and you're happy with your join, you can go ahead and solder it up. I like to use my tweezers, squeezing it shut, just gently put it in the slot on my peg. That just holds it, holds it tight and holds it in a good position for soldering right in front of me. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Okay, so this one is soldered up. Still not in good shape, but it's the right size and it's soldered. So it just needs a bit of tapping to get it perfectly round. While that's just cooling down there, I will take the rest of the metal and then do the same thing for the smaller stone. So 
it's exactly the same, but it's just a smaller stone. So I'm gonna, I won't bother filming it. Uh, I'm gonna use the same bit of metal, but it's a bit wasteful because that's way too deep for this stone, but it's what I've got, it's only silver. Why not? Why not use it? Um, yeah, so same collet again for your smaller stone. I'm just about to solder up my small one. I forgot to say last collet, use hard solder. You don't have to, have to, but I would recommend it in silver. It's a bit tricky when you finish things off and everything's all medium or easy. Yeah, if you've got hard solder and then finishing off and easy, you have very little problems. So I recommend hard solder for these collets. It's got my two collets, so uh, take one. I like using my parallel pliers for this. And then just file around it. I'll start with a solder join. Just get that nice first. And then we're making the sides just parallel and flat and, and good. Uh, I've got too much depth here. I've probably got about a mil too much depth, so um, I've got to reduce that, reduce the height of it a little bit and uh, just flatten it. Nothing, nothing too tricky. I'm just holding it like that. Rotate it a bit. <clears throat> this is why it's quite nice to have a bit of extra thickness because you can, gives you a bit of a uh, bit of room to get rid of hammer marks and stuff without making it too thin. Because we need a bit of thickness there because we're cutting away the inner edge to be able to set the stone. You might get to see me do some setting on this video. Or if not this one, it'll be in part two with the patrons. It's the same again. I, I like doing, I've got two things here. I like doing the same stage in one go. So I do go around it, filing the outside with one, and then I'll go around the second one, filing around the outside. And then I'll file the end, and then I'll pick that one up, file the end. You know what I mean? Sort of, you'll, they're both moving along simultaneously. Once you have filed one end, double check the stones on there because you want, perhaps I should have mentioned this while you're turning them up, you want the same thickness of metal around the outside of the stone on both of them. It's not really good having one quite thick and one quite thin because they're sitting together in the same ring. You want to control the design a little bit, so have them both the same thickness around the outside. If you need to adjust one, like say that one looks fractionally thicker than that one. Uh, it's close enough I can leave it, it's after paper and I think it's not going to show, but if I did want to reduce this one, I would simply tap it in, in there. Let's get one of these that fits and just tap it down slightly. But maybe wait until you've papered it all up anyway, so you've got the actual dimensions, seeing how it's looked, how it looks, because after filing, you get like burrs around the edge and stuff. So just to be double sure, maybe paper it and then and then try this. So you just work on it, like checking your measurements with the stones, the depths and stuff. Uh, just keep filing it until it's correct. Buzz it around with the paper whizzer, and then we're ready to move on. So I'm just doing a little bit of filing and papering with these now. Not really a lot to show you. Once you've papered it, I would just give it just a gentle tap in, in these. Just gets that outer circumference like really perfect. Be careful, I'm not really trying to reduce the size of it or anything, just get it round. Next, we do the inside, get a ball phrase. Ideally get a ball phrase that just, just goes in. But like me, I haven't got one that's as close to it as enough as I would like. So this one's a, a bit too small and I would like to use, but what I'm doing is my technique is I'm kind of rifling it. I'm sort of going round and round and round as I move down it. Just gets the inside edge all nice and cut up nicely. So after you've done the outside and the inside, they should look quite neat now. Uh, they always look a bit blobby and messy before you've done the solder join and while you're filing around the outside there's lots of burrs and stuff they look all weird but after paper and I always find they neaten right up so that's the stage I've got now. Right I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this bigger collet first onto the ring this is why I'm kind of considering this as a beginner's guide as well as a full instructional guide for making something quite expensive because I've done these single stones on the video twice already but this is another way to put these the collet and the ring together which I think is easier than the other two I did and also with beginners in mind people working with silver a silver ring's not very strong 
Uh, the way I'm going to put this in is going to be really strong. So um, that's why I recommended it to beginners if you do it like this. It's easy to accomplish and then the finished thing is actually quite a decent, strong, wearable piece of jewellery for someone if you were going to actually sell it. So right, I'll show, I'll show you this and then that'll be it for part one. Uh, for part two, working with this collet and then also another trick we're going to do to really enhance the design. Uh, that's going to be for patrons only I'm afraid. Okay, working with this. So find your join. I can't see my join because my join is so amazing. <laughs> oh, there it is. Right. Um, I'm putting the collet over the join, yeah? If this is the right finger size for a customer, uh, great opportunity to not have the join anywhere around the back of the shank. So you can hide it with the collet. So the collet is going over the join. Let me just put a little mark on that so I can find it easily next time. Right, now we are basically cutting a section out of this collet and then dropping it down on top of the ring. And I'm saying to do that, yeah, it's because you imagine that's, we've cut a little section out of that and then this ring can slide up in it. But the ring stays as a complete ring, so it's really strong and the collet is just basically soldered on top. If we actually cut open the ring and had it attached to either side of the collet, that's two solder joins and I think a silver ring will be prone to going out of shape like that. This like maximizes strength and especially going over the join, uh, you've got no join around the back of the band, so it's uh, extra strong. This is perhaps the most skillful part of creating this ring. However, it is still easy to do, but saying that, don't underestimate it. Like, work carefully you don't want to have such a big gap that that's just kind of rattling about on there you want it to fit on really tight and nice and then the join is really strong and take less solder you're more likely to solder it really neatly with less trouble uh yeah work carefully okay i don't really have a, like a real tried and tested way of doing this but what i'm thinking now get that measurement i've got 1.8 width i am gonna I should find the joint, you should find the join yeah, in your collet as well. And then your join can be the area that you cut out so there's no join on either side of the collet, which might help you out in polishing. So I'm just gonna put a bit of heat on my collet so I can find the join. Because uh, if you haven't done this before, the solder oxidizes a, a different, different sort of color to the rest of the metal when you get it hot. So you can find the join easy. If you get a ring for repair or sizing, you should find the join if, you, if you've got to cut it out. You do it just by putting a bit of heat on there. See that? Okay, join there, a little light patch. That's the solder. What I'm going to do is hold on to this. I can see my join here. You can decide what's your top, what's your bottom. I would say the bottom should be the nice edge because the top one's going to be cut up for setting so if you've got like a really nice much neater looking end that should be the bottom so i'm going to hold on to that and put my saw blade over my join and then line it up directly across the halfway mark and just put a gentle line this bit's Getting, gonna get cut away so don't worry too much about scoring a line in it so I've got my top and bottom like what I think is exactly marked out and I'll use that as a guide to cut either side of so this is gonna go in straight you don't want your collet going in more one side than the other it's gonna look horrible so that's my guide for cutting out now these are set at about the measurement I need so I'm just gonna look just have a look at it over my line I mean, you can't even, I may as well just scratch a line on it. I've just got my solder line, my saw blade mark in the middle. Just scratching these two lines either side of it. And this is not accurate really, but it is a good guide. So I'll start cutting into that and I won't go right up to that line. I will save that for delicately filing up to but at least I know at least I've got that guide to definitely not go past 
some jewelers when you get to like my sort of stage or just say like after you've got like 10 years or whatever experience you can work just by eye you can sort of look at that and just know that's how much you need to cut out but even though i can do that i do like to take the time to put little marks and measure things out because you can just proceed like without doubt and it's sort of eliminating risk now remember we're not cutting we're not cutting up too far we're not going right up into it we just want enough for this ring to sit in there with the bottom edge sitting flat against this bottom edge we can do a lot of work with the files remember so don't try and go to 100 percent with a saw blade you'll do a neater job with the files So uh, I'm gonna turn, go across now. I cut into it this way, keep sawing, and then turn the blade. Don't try and turn it without moving the saw up and down, otherwise you'll just twist the blade and it might snap. There you go. Just a starter, that's not an accurate hole for this ring, but a head start. Done. Look at that with my ring. Ring doesn't go in there. Perfect. I want to be able to open it up to get the ring to fit. Uh, also look at it. Make sure you've got it's gone down the middle. If you've got more one side than the other, now's an opportunity to straighten it up. So let's increase the width until the, until the ring slots in there. And then it's just a case of making it deep enough for the ring to go right in. I've got this needle file, it's a flat section. It's got a kind of rounded edge. It's quite good because top of that is slightly rounded. filing and I'm pulling weight this way, pushing it that way, just trying to get the, keep it parallel, but open it up. See that? Gone in there now. So now I need to be careful about not uh, expanding the width of it and just making it deeper, a bit tighter this side. But it's going on there now. And with this cylinder phrase, yeah, the ring, the ring is rounded, yeah, so it's not going flat. So I may just put a slight angle on it. So I'm not going straight down parallel, I'm slightly going in like that. It's gonna help the ring sit a bit lower. This is the biggest ball phrase I got, but it's really old and worn out. Let's just try it anyway. <laughs> it's hardly cutting at all. I would, you know, like I marked my solder join. I would, would actually keep only putting that in because you are putting marks on the ring. It saves you if you're scratching it all the way around, trying to do place every time, you're giving yourself more work to do later on. It's all going to be, need repapering. Okay, right, making progress. That, that cylinder phrase is no good. So I got this one, it's smaller, but at least it cuts. Just going to have to cleverly move it around in there. So yeah, I'm going for this angle slightly. And uh, obviously lowering the, the hole. Put that in, should drop right down. Seeing that? Let me show you my gaps. So pushing it down, you want the minimum, this is why you got to work carefully, you want the minimum amount of gap around it so it solders on really strong and really nice. And obviously cut down the same amount both sides. Uh, this, this point, this corner has to clear or at least be level with that inner edge. So when you file around it, it's not gonna be a weird little step or something horrible looking there. When it's ready for soldering in, I've, I've got these big tweezers. I like holding things in these tweezers. Silver's a bit of a liability because it goes so soft when it gets hot. I might get away with it with this one because the shank's quite quite chunky, I guess. Um, but it's nice holding it in tweezers. You can make sure that's like going straight down to the center. Like it's not offset anyway. And I can turn it around and make sure it's all nice and straight. It's not going all wonky and weird. Uh, you can look around it and double check it before you're soldering it. And obviously it's really secure in that position. Look, I can shake it around as much as I want. 
and go, go for a run holding this and then come back and it'll still be in the correct position for soldering. So just to clarify something, yeah, the solder join of the ring is there in the middle and the solder join of the collet is, has been cut away. So after polishing, there's no risk of any join showing up, at least around the sides of the ring. So it's made well and it should, after filing away this little bit sticking over the edge, uh, it should be the correct finger size. So um, <clears throat> just get one bit of solder in, I'm going to let that cool down and then I'm going to check around it, make sure I like the angles and stuff and then I will continue if I like it. All right, I'm looking around it, I'm looking straight on, I'm looking at this angle, making sure it's not tilted this way, looking at it from the side, making sure it's all nicely lining up every direction, looking around it, checking the gaps either side. Yeah, so I'm just going to continue and do the other, get it all completely soldered up. So I've got it sat, because it's already soldered one side, I'm just sitting it upside down now and I'll solder the opposite side. It should hold in its position and I uh, won't have a problem with it. There we go. Notice as soon as the floods, I'm taking heat away and if it needs to flood a little bit more, put the heat on, but I'm always ready to get the heat off. I see other YouTube jewelers just totally going over the top, flooding their solder. Yeah, I think I'll do. I need to add a little bit more on that first side, but basically that's done. So you've done your solders. It's all nice and straight looking. Get your 10 times loop, have a look at your joins, make sure it's entirely soldered all the way around and the back. If you like what you are seeing, then you may continue. Next step, ring file, half round file. You've got to be careful doing this. You can't just rip into it because it's possible you'll put the, the curve slightly the wrong side. Like the, the deepest point has got to be right in the middle. So go careful. Try to only file the collet, not the shank. Because if you're filing the shank, you're gonna make it look thinner from the side. What I do is when I get close, I use a quite a new paper whizzer, big diameter one, and then take the metal away that way. And you can also use these whilst looking at the side, make sure you get that curve directly in the middle. Rubber wheels, I'll put a link on the screen. I may have to withdraw my offer of sending, sending them out to people for free <laughs> because I get quite a lot. <laughs> I've got like a, like a batch of like 10 parcels, <laughs> costing me a fortune on envelopes and postage. People offer to pay, but problem is yeah, postage, international postage from Japan is a nightmare. Like people, I've sold a few things on Etsy and it's basically just two months of me like apologizing that they haven't arrived yet. If we do all the tracking information, it says they're on the way, but at the same time, they're on a ship in the middle of the ocean and no one can really say for definite where it is. All we can confirm is that it's on its way. But people don't like waiting two months, even three months. Uh, there's one parcel I sold. It was meant to be a Christmas present and the guy still hasn't got it. It's going to New York. Um, I'm going to double check again today, but he's calling for a refund, but... I can't give it because all the tracking information says it's still on its way. If we can confirm it's lost, I'll happily give him a refund. But um, yeah, I don't want to have to go through all that with subscribers to the Dimat channel. Otherwise, I'll just have loads of comments on the, in the video saying he took my money, but he didn't actually post anything. So that's why I'd rather literally give things away for free. Done your rubber wheel in, get your solder joints nice. And there's on to... A mini paper wizard. I'll put a link on the screen. I did a video recently on making your own. I'm not even sure if you can buy them. You probably can, but I just I never look to make them.
And there you go. You've got a nice strong ring with a setting in it. I think that's the easiest way to create a ring like this. Uh, as for setting that stone, obviously that bit of shank's there. You can drill a small hole right through it and then just open it up to what you need to get the stone to drop down. Uh, cutting away a little seat for the setting edge. Maybe I'll do a setting video with this ring so people can see in detail what I do. Um, a little bit more confident now with setting. It's not something I've ever really tried before I come to Japan, but I'm forced into having to learn it myself because I can't find anyone to do it for me. Uh, in London, you used to just throw, you make a mount and then you just throw it at someone who just does setting and then they do a really good job. So that's why I've never learned to do setting myself. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's how I completed this ring and it's uh, strong and wearable. And that's why it's a full instructional guide for making this ring. It's also good for beginners because it's quite easy to do. The finger size easy, it's just a wedding ring with uh, a straight collet with a bit cut out, plonked on top, is essentially what it is, and you end up with a strong, nice design ring. Now that's it for part one. Part two, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, he's got that other smaller collet. He's just gonna put that on next to it. Like, what else can you do with it? No, I can do more with it. You're not seeing what I'm envis envisioning. Uh, yeah, really, really cool design, this one. Uh, that's not it. There's more, more to make with uh, using this collet, so. To see that, become a patron. There's a link in the description. Sorry if you feel like I'm bullying you into that. You don't have to, don't have to become a patron at all, but you are helping me help you. I'm, I'm, I need some little bit of financial incentive to keep this channel going and offering my, my skills and abilities. Uh, yeah, patrons are really helping me out so far. I've had a couple of payments. I get one, I get a payment every month and uh, they're, they're really helping me get, replace tools, buy new stones so I can share more of what I know and it's working quite well and the patrons seem quite happy. So cool, yeah, I hope you would consider becoming a patron. I can take you to the next level and enable you to make something really special. And then maybe at the end of that video, I will show things online from that prestigious London jewelers I was talking about, see what they're doing. And I think what we're gonna make is better than what they're offering. And their rings are like 10, 20, 30 grand, like mad. Uh, there's things about them, I looked at their designs recently, things about it I don't like, and we can, we can improve it and I'll show you how. So yeah, I hope you, hope you like that. I hope you find it useful. Please try that video if you're new to making jewelry. Um, yeah, have a go at making that. It's not too difficult and you end up with a nice single stone ring that's nice and nice. And obviously the size of your stone will affect how it looks. You can play with the height, you can play with the shank, you can thin it off down the back and do different things with it. So it's up to you, it's a bit of, if you can make that, then you can do one for yourself with your own design, put your own kind of little flair into it. So uh, yeah onwards and upwards as I, I keep telling myself lately try new things and then once you've mastered something or you've done completed something for the first time you'll have loads of ideas of what to do with it in your own way next so please use my videos I don't think that's the only way you can make stuff you can very welcome to put your own artistic license on things and create things how you want to and then you develop your own style and uh, yeah and then you you are someone who's participating in hand making jewelry and moving it forward as a movement as an artistic Thing. Uh, yeah, cool. So if you haven't done already, please click like and subscribe for the algorithms. Uh, click that notification bell to be notified of new videos. Look out for part two. If you don't become a patron, I will do a very highly edited down preview so you can sort of get a gist of what's going on in that video. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please join me again for the next video. Thanks for watching. No, don't go yet. Don't go yet. I've got new patrons. Let me, let me get their names. Ray Jewett and TB. Yesterday and today, new patrons to the channel. Thank you very much, guys. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, really helping me continue it and grow it and uh, offer, offer more. So yeah, thank you and welcome. Cool. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.